Right, I'm back. Excellent. So, minor technical faults there. Uh, we'll see how the stream holds up with... Um, I normally stream off-wired because it's way more stable, but we're having to do it off the Wi-Fi now because the game in the current state on this branch does not like um, running without an internet connection. So let's see if we can just restart this and get somewhere. So what we're talking about is Fog of War. And I wanted to kind of go through... Why do I still think I'm in... Oh yeah, I'm in offload mode, that's why. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the trade-offs and decisions we've been making recently with regards to this stuff. So, let's just drag out a few tiles and show some Fog of War stuff. So here's a few tiles. This will be one room. And we'll shove a little doorway in here. And then we'll put some tiles down on the other side. Um, and that's going to be our second room. Now, we're in DM mode at the moment, so we can see everything. Um, we'll drop down a little slime guy and give permission to our player um, to be able to see it. Now down the bottom where we can see our little um, kind of oak tree view of what's going on, all these green parts down here are solid. All these dots are places that the game is searching where I can walk. And they're quite a bit higher than the player um, because uh, the creatures you're controlling might have an ability to climb. So we need to look up and then find the floor from there um, to see how... To basically to see where we can walk. Um, and then if I just... Whoa, didn't actually want to do it that way. Let's just spin it back around. Um, if I switch back and forward between... D, if I switch... Actually, we can just switch to the player mode. The blue dots are where it found the floor. So even though the floor is actually right down the bottom here, um, these green blocks are above it just because of the resolution of how we're dividing space. So we, we divide everything into tile size chunks. It still works, um, but yeah, that's that's where it is right now. So we have our little slime dude up here. Doot. And we can move him about, but he can't see what's on the other side of the door. And this is so, this is, again, we wanted this kind of thing for storytelling reasons. You don't want to be able to see the entire level and see where all the treasure is and stuff like this. Elevator simulator, good to see you here, man. Um, so we have to have something like Fog of War, tile revealing, stuff like this. Now, one way to do it is just have the DM drag out regions and say, you can see this, you can't see this, and things like this. But that's tedious, that puts work on the DM. And what we want is to be using the computer for what it's good at, using it to enhance systems we already have, and for trying to keep the focus on storytelling as much as possible. Um, so yeah, just trying to search our way around and find where we can walk. Um, so I've been doing a bunch of daily posts recently on this kind of stuff. So we've seen kind of the flood fill things that I've been doing, um, filling up regions. The, the last implementation required you to put walls around things. So it basically, it would, it would use this oak tree down here and it would do a flood fill. And it was relatively efficient. Um, and so it would flood everywhere that it could reach that was lower than the eye level of the player. And so that worked really well. It would snake around corridors and things like this. One of the one of the things we wanted to do, rather than having to designate what a room actually is, like rather than have the DM have to do that, um, is to just say to to give simple rules so people can intuit as well as see what's uh, going on. So you can see what's going on. You should be able to intuit what's going to happen because we're going to give the DMs tools so they can see what a particular um, player can see. But also, they should be able to understand, um, with very simple kind of rules, what is going to happen when I open this door? What are they going to then be able to see? And so the simple rule we had come up with was, anywhere you could walk. Anywhere you could walk that was lower than your eye level, that's what you're going to be able to see. Um, the problem with the way we'd implement it with the fill is the fill will fill vertically down as well. So anything that was left at the eye level was kosher. So if you had a massive ravine, you'd be standing on one side. It would fill the ravine. It would go across the other side of the ravine. You'd see the other side of the ravine, which is great. These are all things you did want to see. But then it would get across, and there might be a tunnel. And it would just go off down the tunnel, reveal all the things on the other side, and all these catacombs and things. And you hadn't got across the ravine yet. So it felt kind of weird. Um, so we've kind of gone back to doing a slightly um, simpler approach but with a few um, tweaks. See, the version that we've had on streams before is a much earlier prototype. A lot of our work recently has just been taking the prototype we had and going system by system and trying to shore things up and make sure they feel good. Um, 
And one of the things that didn't work before very well was handling the floor system. <laughs> All of this jank up here is because I've, I've been breaking how floors work. Um, so yes, that'll, that'll come back in soon. I'm just going to switch over to DM mode again. And then uh, we can show different floors. Not sure why it's not jumping up to those floors right now, but there are... There's plenty of bugs on this branch, that's for sure. So, what the DM can then do is um, open this and then let's um, switch to a side view here where we can see all this yellow part is the place uh, the place that has been revealed to the player. When I switch back to the player, what's going to happen is the player is going to just quickly reevaluate what they can see. So if I do that now, let's hit F7, switch over. Now we can see the yellow extends all the way here and they can now see these tiles. So that was the side effect of opening this door. And we can do it a bunch of different ways as well. Um, what we could do, which we'll probably show that with a wall. So we can do that in a second, actually. So let's, uh, I'm going to stop and restart. And the reason I'm doing that is a bunch of the stuff I've been changing, I haven't gone and updated the serialization code and saving and stuff like this. So there are some things that if I just do saving and loading might mess up. So here's another test room. A couple of blocks in the middle. Let's go and grab a character, get our... Oh, let's get a little fire dude here. Doot, doot. I know that's not the proper names, but I don't care. Right, so again, if we switch to the player view, we can't see outside the room. Um, one of the things that happened that was a problem with our previous approach, the eye level one, is that as soon as you added the mechanic of being able to climb stairs, so the search is looking around and is going, okay, anything lower than eye level. But that's no good because a flight of stairs goes way higher than your eye level and you want to be able to see the top of the stairs. So you have to have a thing that it will, if it finds a platform that is kind of within your climbing reach, it would go on there and then it's going to flood from that new height. But that doesn't work because if you go up a flight of stairs, at some point, you're going to be higher than this door. And at that point, the flood fill goes over the wall. So if I bring this up down here. Your chap would go up one more step, get to up here. His eye level will be way over this wall. And all of the fog of war will flow out of here and reveal all of this. Even though what they're really doing is they're inside this room going up the stairs to the next story. So they can't see out here yet. So all these little edge cases, and it's really dumb stuff, really. It's kind of thing that becomes very obvious when you start positioning things and playing around with it and getting, noting down all the edge cases. So yes, what we do now is a much simpler version, and it's just we take, um, we walk um, out from the current position. So we go sideways and we look down, we find the floor. Um, once we found the floor, we can do that recursively. So then we can go look right again, and like we saw before, why do I keep grabbing it like that? That really isn't what I want to do. Um, when I switch here, we can see the yellow dots, which is where we are um, searching from, are above the ground. And so if there is a an object there it can grab onto, then it'll, it'll look down from here, it will find the object, and it will say, okay, you can stand on top of that. And, and the it's just a flood fill, really. It's like if you use a paint program, and you use uh, the uh, fill little bucket thing, and you click on a space, and it just goes whoop, and it like go lets the color go everywhere out to the edges. Um, yeah, it's the same kind of thing, but with some 3D tweaks. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to switch back to the uh, DM mode, and we're going to make some stairs. Um, so we are going to... Let's go in here and just grab a block and we'll do this, do this. And now, hopefully, um, when I go back to the player mode, yep, all the floor out here is uncovered. Because even though the door's not here, the search has walked up to these stairs and now knows it can hop over this wall. So that's basically what I've been up to. This did require a different, um, a different implementation. Um, than we had before. So basically that flood fill work that I've been doing recently has all been kind of shelved to the side. It is still useful for some other things and a lot of the a lot of the time, I mean making an oct tree and doing some stuff in it, once you the oct tree, making the oct tree is easy. Make, working out how to do the flood fill um, took a little longer just because it's not something I've done before and I didn't find great resources on that. A lot of the time was hooking it into the other systems um, because you have a lot of 
It really ties into how tiles and floors and everything work. And because that's the majority of the um, the code base, as far as like play behavior, it kind of gets everywhere. So there was a lot of code to change. And that's really what's been taking the time, other than also just my, my own focus hasn't been at the tip top, which is why um, I banned myself from all websites today, except like useful ones like Stack Overflow and GitHub and stuff. So we have some questions coming in. Um, how do you how do you handle the case of cinematic view? In cinematic view, we can just um, well, it's, it's kind of up to us, but we could just show everything. We can basically use the same thing as DM, or we don't do that and we just let you see what you've already uncovered. Um, that one actually, we haven't hooked it into cinematic yet. Cinematic is um, later, probably next month. Uh, we're going to be rewriting how that works, um, but it's a pretty simple feature, so it shouldn't require too much stuff. Um, the main one to do now is to um, send the DM all of the um, information on where the different characters can walk, which again, is not much data, so it's nice and easy to sync around. Um, there'll be some really compact ways of um, transmitting oak trees as well, so that'll be fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's actually the bulk of it. Um, once we've got that, then what would be really cool to do and what we're thinking about um, is that um, actually, we've got some clarification from here from Johnny. We'll either show everything or we'll have a character in the center which uh, which will uncover things. Oh, cool. Yeah, that works. That would be quite sensible. Um, yeah. Where was I going with this? I don't know. I just distracted myself. What was I rambling about? Da -da -da -da. Yes. Oh, and by the way, this may look uglier than our, our normal stuff, but that's dev things for you. It always will. I don't make pretty levels. I just make ones with horrible edge cases. Um, oh yeah, here's, here's one. Let's uh, let's load up this jail. This thing or these areas are nightmares. <laughs> these were designed to cause me trouble. I actually haven't tested them again since um, since last time. So I'll be interested to see how they work. Um, but yes, this is uh, when you have overhangs and things like this, uh, some of the approaches we were looking at using get really tricky. Um, also, we have lots of different changes of height. Um, so just working out how things should behave. There were some ideas I was coming up with, oh, maybe we can store things like this. And then you try and come up with ways that it'll break. And this was one of the things that broke one of my older schemes. Um, so I went back to off trees and doing stuff like that. Again, I think floors are probably not working yet, so that's uh, that disappeared. Let's just do this. Okay, so is this going to work? This is actually really interesting. Okay, so there's some stuff not showing there. Not sure why. Is that probably... Let's have a look. No, it's not into another zone, so it shouldn't be any issues related to that. Oh, well, we'll see. Uh, let me go down to the next level, and this has all worked. Okay, so this bit's all fine. Um, but not that character. That's I haven't actually looked in the, how the characters are handling the unveil yet, so that's not a problem either. All still to play for. So yes, lots of things to tinker with. Um, lots of things still to do. Let's have a look. What other things are going on? Um, Saint Command is saying, but I remember the edge case of the bar that was dark because you were not in it yet. Um. Not sure about that one. Will there be plans for dynamic lighting? I think lighting's pretty dynamic already. Um, oh yeah, they didn't unveil. That was interesting. It's just that. A bunch of this stuff didn't uncover. Why? Ah, we'll see. Not a problem. Um, yeah, this doesn't really show things so much, but... Oh yeah, I'm on the wrong floor. Let's undo that. Go down to the bottom floor. And if I switch to the character mode, no, nope, the flame still isn't showing there. That's not a problem. Again, like having messed with so much stuff today, there is a lot of. There's been a lot of churns. There's a lot of things broken. There's going to be a lot of cleanup tomorrow. That's probably my job. For what day are we today? I actually, don't remember. Is it Friday today? Yes. Okay, so Saturday. Saturday will be a lot of cleanup and bug finding and things like this. Um, 
Say a player or character has a torch in a completely dark room, will the torch be able to provide a line of sight to other uh, PCs? So it's a, it is occluded. Oh, um, the the lighting system is independent from the fog of war um, at the moment. So, hmm, that's interesting actually. So the fog of war is really just about what tiles we make um, available. So it's not really about whether you can see through the room because we also travel around corners and things like this that you haven't uncovered yet. Um, we do limit it by a distance. So based on your character's um, eyesight range, things like this, whatever the, the equivalent stat is for the kind of game that you're playing. Um, so yes, we've got a lot of things we can tweak there. I mean, this is the... This has been working about half an hour. So, well, probably about 45 minutes. So it, it is brand, 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 brand new um, implementation. So we'll, we'll get to we'll get to have a look at that, like Johnny said. Um, happy, happy National Day, Austria. Oh, happy day. Okay, so that's really the main thing I wanted to talk about was just we've had some issues with uh, some of the approaches you've seen so far. Uh, we've come up with a different approach, and we need to um, keep hammering on that. And uh, yeah, just wanted to show you some of that, rather than doing a write-up, because it was going to take quite a few drawings to try and explain what was going on. Uh, so I'm open for questions, um, but otherwise we're kind of done. It wasn't. I know my streams are often kind of like two hours and things like this, but um, we could try and keep the daily ones a little shorter. But I'm well open to questions now, so do fire away. The stream idea is great. Cool. I mean, we can do them. I, I'm so streaming is streaming is a little interesting. I I see. I do. I do um, like programming related streams, Lisp streams on Wednesdays, and my um, my partner is very gracious about uh, me kind of monopolizing the flat in that period of time and staying quiet and all this kind of stuff. But that's not something I want to do too many days a week because it's a massive inconvenience to him and stuff like this. So I'm not entirely sure when to do these. I could do, do them during the day, but that's the during the day Norwegian time, which is pretty inaccessible to a lot of people. But to people in Europe, it might not be. And it'd be weird, wouldn't it? Because it'll be during my work day, which means if you're in Europe, it's during your work time. If you're in the US, it's while you're asleep. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best time to do it. So I don't know how often we'll do these tech streams, uh, but you know, every now and again, we can probably do that. Redoran saying, hey beggars, love the Lisp work. I'm psyched to see you working with my friend on Tailspire. Hey man, cool. Are you one of Dwarf's friends or are you on, um, do you know Johnny? Sounds good. Cool. So any more for any more? I know, like, again, there's, there's not going to be too much now because I really didn't give you uh, any time at all. Chase Red, awesome. Good to see you, man. And, yeah, what else? Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm done for the day, so my brain's turning off. Um, I'll do some cleanup, I'll get some code um, sorted out, and then we'll look at the next features. Very soon, uh, me and Johnny are going to meet up, and we are going to be having a look. Hey, Lolbook. Um, we're going to be having a look at the placement system um, because you might have even noticed on this stream there's a couple of little things that don't play great. So if we take this lovely piece of cheese and I want to put the cheese under the ledge, which is where cheese should live, it wants to put it all the way up here, um, which isn't great. So we need to be able to place things under ledges and stuff like this. Not a massive... I mean, th there's enough technical edge cases that it will be some, some work, but... We will get there. Um, a lot of this plays into the systems that handle um, all these little tiles that show you where you can go. There's pathfinding systems that are integrated into that. That's going to be interesting when we have to update the pathfinding to handle things like uh, multiple floors. So here at the moment we're showing these little tiles for walking up and down. Um, but if we want to be accurate about the range, um, then we're going to have to yeah have pathfinding that... that um, Traverses the 3D space and all that kind of thing. It should be fine, but there's some details. So, you know, we'll work on that. 
Uh, send commanders saying, and maybe switch to PTT to stop the apartment hogging a bit. Um, PTT? Cool. Right. Let's push to talk. Ah, yeah, but then, um, like, the, the, the being quiet thing is, like, not being able to play computer games because, like, the voices from the cutscenes would trigger the thing as well. So, that's good. Uh, Telspar is looking very promising. Look forward to try it with D&D &D friends. Awesome! We will try and get something in your hand this year. Um, keep your ears and eyes open for a um, alpha coming out at the end of the year. And then we will be doing kind of early-ish next year. I think March, april -y time if we can get everything, all the pieces in place. Then it'll be really good, good to get a... Um, early access -y kind of thing going on. But we'll, we've talked about some of that before. We've got to update our FAQs and things, and we'll rant about this in the uh, Discord channel. Um, so I will run away. Um, is this that material shader thing? I don't have um, as many details on the um, recent changes to the art stuff low block sorry about that johnny is your man there and we'll probably take that over to the discord um, channel um the distracted gamer 62 when are you able what tabletop rpgs do you play see this sounds crazy but this is my real first foray into these kind of games i i've well i've played a little DD before but really not that much um my interests come from building tools i love love building tools and i really want to make good tools and stories um i absolutely adore just um just every aspect of storytelling so like be, being able to work on a tool to help people to tell stories is massively motivating to me and that's my thing so the the upside for you uh, from that point of view is that again rest of the team are hardcore into this um, so they provide me with that kind of insight, and you obviously provide me on insight of what um, what you need in tools like this. We try and find a happy medium between different things so it doesn't feel like um, a kind of design by community mess and actually feels like something singular and substantial um, and that the systems work together. And um, I have no favoritism over which game. So I want to make something that handles as, ma like, as many different kind of um, tabletop, um, role playing and otherwise games uh, that we can. So yeah. Loblock saying, "How big can the maps be at the moment? The limit is about thirty-two thousand tiles in either direction, um, and the same upwards. So you're talking uh, probably about twenty-five miles of um, of equivalent space or something like this. Twenty-five kilometers, sorry, in in, in real world space." But the thing wouldn't handle that right now because we've got to handle um, what we need to do. I mean, things are kind of set up that we will be able to do it. But the world is separated into these zones that you can see the yellow squares here. We need to be able to stream those in independently um, so we can load and unload things. Like, if it's a mile away, you don't need that in your memory. In fact, you don't need it for a lot less of a distance. So as you scroll around, we need to load stuff in. So that's going to be... That is probably not going to be in for the alpha, but we will have it in for the proper release down the line um so yeah same commander um not theoretically infinite not at all um we i'm i'm for the tile coordinates for example i'm using a short so that's um yeah thirty-two thousand. um either way and uh can it handle mountain environments if we had mountain tools sure like mountain like tiles um there's Think of it along the same lines as you would with the um, physical sets. In that you can... Um, if you were going to build one of these terrains out of modular parts, um, you would have different levels and you would be able to stack them and stuff like this. That would roughly be um, what you would do. Again, if you, it would probably not be wise to try and make the entire mountain. But I don't know, you know? Like, we'll see. It'll be... It's going to be entertaining to, for me to see how big people want to go with this and how small. Um, oh yeah, one one last technical detail actually, to, just to do with the fog of war, um, is that... Um, let's have a look. Is that one of the things we had before with the flood fill approach 
was that empty space was empty space. So if you placed a character, it would search out from their position and it would go all the way around here. It would search everywhere. And so the, what the tricky thing was, was if you had not placed a wall on one tile, it would then flow out of that and would go all the way around the outside of buildings looking for a way to get in. And then it would flow in the like the back door of the building or something like this that had been left open. And it would uncover all of the inside of the house. Um, which is a real pain because it means you have to be really anal about placing walls and it didn't feel fun. This is some of the stuff that just like... The, the fill mechanic sounded so sensible. Um, but once you get it in, once you get through the technical problems, there are a bunch of just stuff that like just feel like when you get actually get it in your hand it's just like ah this isn't fun this isn't fun I have to throw it all away <laughs> do something else um so yeah um just to clarify as well sent commander even though um we do have those limits on a single board right now um we will be obviously be having multiple boards maps that join boards together and all of that stuff so a campaign can take can take place over a thousand miles that's that's not a big um that's not a big problem. Uh, it's just one board at one time is currently limited. But we'll see how that goes in the future. I mean, this is all just, like, stuff that we're trying to get for, the, for V1. Um, once we've made something that feels good, then it'll be looking at, like, each of, the, each of our limitations and seeing where we can go. Um, one of the big things that we want to do once it's out is work on the rule system. So a system that can quickly... And I mean, quickly handle um, rules from diverse um, role-playing games. That hasn't been done in a way that I don't know. It could be done better. It could be done better. And I'm really excited about doing that. But that's post like getting the thing out the door and actually making money because that's going to take some time. Uh, one user suggested that it would be cool if players could move their minis. With the keyboard, seamlessly and freely when out of combat. Are you guys doing that? Um, you don't actually do it with the keyboard right now, as far as I know. Um, there might be a keyboard option in there. Um, but when you're out of combat, yeah, you can move anywhere you like at any time. That's, um, it's, really up f it's really for you and your DM to work out any additional uh, restrictions. We're trying to keep this very open. It's, it's a board. You place things on it and you move around it. And um, yeah, then when you switch into... Uh, battle mode or something like this. Oh, it's cutscene mode, sorry. And that's combat mode. Which is all not showing much at the moment because dev builds. Uh, but yes. When you're in exploration mode, you can just explore. When you go into other modes, then there are some restrictions. Um... And who would need the whole board anyway? Oh, there'll be someone, man. 64 GMs and 128 players. Well, it's like, that's things like, yeah, you only need to be in a... You might split up your party, though. Uh, we want to be able to have not just different... We don't... Okay, so let's see how do I work out this sentence. We want to be able to have split parties and potentially split DMs. So you could have two DMs running uh, different parts of the party at different times, or one DM, sorry, one GM um, handling two split groups. That'd be fine. We also want that to work over different boards. So you say one of them's in one country and one of them's in another, right? That's not going to be on the same board. Um, but we need, there's a bunch, basically, technically, yes, we will be able to handle it. Uh, not in the alpha, uh, but it's something we'll be able to do in future. One of, the, one of the silly things we just need to put in there for that is that chat needs to work over um, multiple, multiple rooms. So when you're in one board right now, you're in one network session and everything can see each other. Um, if we're going to do other things and we have to pull it outside of that um, system and do things slightly differently, we have servers for doing this kind of stuff potentially. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's stuff that can come down the line. Nobody's Lemons! Oh, I still love that name. Um, really cool looking project. Roll20 and some um, other alternatives I've tried. Wolf's felt too simplistic and cumbersome. Like I'm just really happy that this... Um, that storytelling things have good tools right and i like the stuff that roll 20 and others doing is is good I, we want we want more tools in this space we don't want like a starvation of or kind of monopoly anywhere or it, really in any subject but but yeah the more the merrier kind of thing um there are like there are things that we can do differently 
and there are some restrictions we're going to put on. We're not like take every idea in the world and put it in one product because it'll feel bad. <laughs> it'll feel bad. Um, do I hear an idea for a D&D D MMO? If you do, it's someone else's job because <laughs> I'm not doing an MMO. Fuck that. Okay. Um, Bouncy Rock saying we can look into adding support for moving singular tiles with keystroke if it makes sense. Cool. Um, Noctropolitan. 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 Like Neapolitan. It makes sense if there's no um, combat, it gives the party a border gate Neverwinter Nights feel. Uh, where they're exploring a town or whatever, and those are two good things. <laughs> so if we can get, if we can combine those feelings, that'd be lovely. Nobody's level tabletop simulator. Exactly, man. Um. Oh, sorry, that was a correction for something else. That's cool. Um, also, dragging your mini when not in combat to move ten tiles is boring, right? Oh, fuck's sake, give me the sauce and I'll make an MMO of it. No! <laughs> my sauce, my problems. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Any more for any more? Ah, somewhere between water and coffee is where I exist. Ah. I'm not a man as to work on it with a bomber's peak, but... With these liquids, I can keep going. Right. I think that might be us. Oh, any update on the scripting side of it? Nothing new recently? I mean, I don't think we ever really showed that kind of stuff. So, where we are at the moment, this is, again, this is super basic stuff. But, um, a door, let's just try and find it over here. So, if we just go into board, but no, where did I put it? Uh, everything's in different places now because I've been hacking. Um, okay, so in some of these, where would this be? Nope. Let's just do a new scene. That's going to be a lot less faff. Oh, I could have just picked it in the other half. Oh. Chris is an idiot. Don't mind me. I don't know things. Right, so let's go and find this. Um, no, that's really, I want that guy. Cool, right. So if we go and find the insides of this tile, um, this is the floor component here, and this is the doorway um, itself. The doorway has a Lua container on it, and you can define a Lua script. So this probably isn't showing very well, so um, let me just, can I copy this from here? No. Okay, where would that be? This path here, can I copy that? No. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so it's as it's curtain. Okay, one second while I go and find that. Tail Weaver is the um, tooling we built on top of Unity for um, making and exporting assets. And that's, sorry, that's composing assets. You don't build models inside of that. That's obviously for model building programs, like sculpting and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, once you can import those things in... Um, Come on, Chris, learn to type. Okay, so this is currently the script that is controlling the door. And it's a little janky, it's not final. But what you have is you have a Lua script where you can specify at the top of the file um, the purpose of the script. And that's mandatory. You have to do this underscore underscore purpose equals something. Um, state, state, state M right now is state machine. So this is a state machine. Uh, you have to define if you're if you've set it to state M, state M, you set the states and you set the starting state, and then what happens? And this is where it's going to be a bit tricky to explain. Um, like so, when the thing starts, the awake function gets called just to let you know you can do something in there, like debug log. And then this close and unlock state is uh, transitioned to, 
And what it means is when a, t when a tile transitions to a state, the function with the same name is called. So we transition to this state. This will be printed. And then um, some of these attributes are going to be set. So the attributes, if I jump back to here, let's see if I can just pop this over to this side. And we can do it all at once. The attributes are set down here on the lower container. And so what we've done is we've said, hey, the open close anim is an animator, and it's this animator. And you can drag this all together inside Unity, inside Tailweaver, and then save it out. Um, and the collider, um, we, we just put this collider here. This is kind of just testing this. So then you can address the attributes using underscore underscore attributes. And then we talk about open close anim, which is this guy here. And then we set its parameter from is open to false. And the parameter is, some of this stuff is pretty Unity specific, but the parameter is something on the animation. When we change the um, param on the animation, we actually trigger the animation. So we, when you say false, it's closed. When you say true, it's open for is open. Um, and then setting some tag stuff that, that, that comes up later. And then um, enabling occluders. This is this tells um, this object that it's solid. When we disable occluders, when we open the door, that's when um, your character is going to be able to walk through. Because now the entire door, which would normally occlude things, um, is told not to be an occluder. So stuff can walk through. Terminology is a bit wafty. We can we'll be changing that up, and that's not a problem. So then what happens is we get into this uh, state function. And what you return is is information on how you will transition to another state. Um, so you return a table and you say the next state is open um, if this happens. Um, so if there's a, this is a menu element, which when you right click, it says open. The description is open. It's not used at the moment, but I've just left it there anyway. And it um, triggers true. Um, I can't remember what the, what the true bit was for, actually. That's something else. But basically, it means you get a button, and when you click it, we will transition to this state. And all of this stuff is done asynchronously. So when um, the whole point... Okay, so the rationale for all this jumping around is that Lua's great and all of that stuff, but you are going to have potentially huge levels with potentially tons of interactable objects in them, and if we're calling in and out of Lua all the time, we really make it much more likely that we're going to hit performance problems. So what we try and do instead is we call into Lua less frequently, but what we re return are things that we can evaluate continuously on the C Sharp side, which is going to run faster. Um, and that's what this basically does. So then you click this. Um, if we actually look at the console down here below all the errors, um, hopefully, really? Oh. Okay. Let's see if let's go back to the game and transition state a few more times. There it is. Okay, so you can see close and unlock fired and then open fired when we close the door and open the door again. And that's just this code being called here. Um, and that is really where the scripting is at right now. There's there's a bunch of other stuff that is behind this that makes it work, um, but I don't really want to dive into that too deep right now. Um, and it's, it's all about that um, how to how to compose things that we can run on the C sharp side really fast, rather than having to call into Lua all the time. And it's stuff like when you get the position of a tile, of like a position of a character. It isn't just the position of that character at that moment in time. It's the position of the character at any point in the future. So when the tile moves, this value updates automatically. So then you could get the position of a cannon and a position of the character. And you could t like subtract them from each other, which will give you the difference. And it, that difference will update automatically whenever those things are moved without having to call back into Lua. And then you can do things like have the cannon follow the character and all this kind of stuff. And that's all run in C Sharp and, again, but hopefully more efficiently. Uh, but we'll get to that because that's uh, still not proven. It's just where we are right now. Um, da -da -da -da. Any update in scripting? So that's the update in scripting, the client scripting. Um, 
the client scripting? Then I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, can't wait for the game to be released. Awesome! Neither can I. Low block. How do you like C Sharp? It's fine. It's probably the best one of those languages in its kind of little family of things. You know, it's alright. Uh, obviously, it's uh, Unity is on an older version. I mean, it's not horrendous. It's like 4.6 or something like this. I can't remember. Um, it would be nice to have some of the newer stuff, but to be honest, I've got Lambdas and stuff like this now, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, the recent update was a really big help, actually. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Wow, that went on way longer than I thought it would. I thought this was going to be like 15 minutes, and then nobody's, nobody's going to have any questions, so it'll be done. I'm happy to be here, though. It's... it's uh, we're really lucky to have you folks uh, following along and supporting us. So, thank you. Can you upgrade Unity? You, the Unity picks the uh, .NET version you're going to be using. So, no. Thank you, folks. Right, I think we'll call it a night. Um, that's a long daily. So, yeah. Oh, wait a second. You, oh, yeah, we're just talking about C-sharp now. Um, peace. Catch you next time.